Going on guys, welcome back to another cash game review session. Today we've got our boy Range Jam playing 10 Blitz on ACR. As always guys, please subscribe if you enjoy the content. Enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one. Hey Lucy, study stream dude. All right, so this is pretty loose, this 10-7 suited. It's not even open in 10-8 suited, so 10-7 suited is way too loose. 10-8 suited, I think, is pretty close. So I've actually been open tighter at 10 zoom because people are very aggressive. Now, the thing is, me being a streamer and having lots of people in the stream in the pools, they're going to fuck around against me a bit more, so I, I want to play a tighter range. So I'm definitely not opening this. It's really hard for me to say because on one hand I want to say, oh yeah, you can you can open wider because you know you, you want to play pots with fun players, but my experience of 10 zoom on ACR is going to be very, very different to your experience of 10 zoom. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of difficult for me to say, so we'll just sort of stick with the ranges. So I'm definitely never opening this because I'm gonna get three battle left, right, and center. I have, have noticed the 10 zoom pools are relatively relatively aggressive for 10 zoom. So this, in my opinion, is too loose. Especially if you've got like regs behind you, if you've got absolute whales behind you, I think it's fine. King for suited, easy defend. I wouldn't really get into the habit of three bet in this. We have better hands to three bet. It's pr just pretty aggressive. It just makes a nice enough call, to be honest. I'd prefer this blind versus blind. Get in the fucking bin. Now you've just wasted equity. Let's have a look what it wants to three bet. Um, big blind versus button. Three bet a hell of a lot. So it's three bet calling all of this. And it's three bet five betting these. And it's three bet folding these. But look at what it's calling. It's just calling these. So something else I'll say as well, because people tend to four bet to fucking stupid sizes, we end up there are certain spots against certain opponents where I wouldn't even three bet like good hands like Queen Ten suited and stuff. Like because this wants to call a four bet with Queen Ten suited. We can cannot do that profitably at ten and L in these pools. One, because the rake is high. Two, because their, th their four bets are, are going to be extremely strong in position in general. And three, because they make it so fucking big that they just literally price us out with those hands. So in terms of three betting here, I'm actually probably not three betting this queen 10 suited, queen jack suited a lot. I'm going to be calling because I want to play pots. So I can understand then deviating and going with these hands that you're, you're happy to fold to a four bet. But I would just take a flop with this hand. Like, you've got a suited king. Let's just fucking take a flop. I think we just want to try and play a lot of flops at these stakes. Because pre-flop is easy to learn. You look at ranges. You, you do as you're told. Post-flop, you need to understand a lot of fundamentals. You can't just do as you're told post-flop, right? Like, you could watch every single one of these review streams that, that we do. And you'd still be, like, having a hard time in some spots. I don't even hate 4 bet and king 9 suited. I wouldn't actually hate it. We can just call though. Um, Jack 8 suited, just too loose under the gun plus 1. Marginally, it will open... It's going to it's gonna open Jack 9 suited plus, but not Jack 8 suited. But again, the further your gaps are in, in connectors, the worse they are. Connectors are better. Jack 10 suited, you can flop multiple straights, like 8 king queen, 8 9 10, but then you can also have like 9 queen king, 8, 9, queen, stuff like that. When you've got, like, jack 8 suited, there needs to be a 9 and a 10. When there's jack 9 suited, there needs to be a 10. For a straight with jack 8, you need a 9 and a 10. For a straight with jack 7, you need an 8, 9, and 10. So the, f the more gaps there is, the more specific cards you need to hit straights, the worse playability they have, the worse hand they are. So this king 9 suited, I think calling is the best option, especially when he's given this price like he's he, he, he's made it really small he should be going like 10 big blinds here we're getting like two two to one uh over two to one so we can just call this in position nice price nice flop let's go and folding this flop even though it kind of sucks it's a board i guess he can do some betting on it but yeah as, as long as we're not floating that absolute nonsense it's fine queens is a good end so i'm told been looking for. I know we we missed the last two weeks. One because I was hungover. One cause, the other one because I was probably hungover. I just couldn't be asked. So this is a board that I'm okay just doing a lot of small betting on. Again, this will always come down to the opponent for me. If I'm against somebody that's like super active and loves a good check raise, I might just check back and then play a turn. I think this is a board that's a pretty good example of a potential range bet. 
Less so because the king and the nine mean there are some straight draws. Let's say this was king eight deuce or king seven deuce. It's more disconnected, so there's basically zero draws on that board. This you can have like, you know, queen 10, 10 jack. There's just a bit more going on on this kind of board, but I'm, I'm definitely okay with this uh, this kind of size. I think it's fine. Yeah, we'll call one, continue. Um, it'll come down to the opponent again for me, but like we, we can't fold just yet. Like He really doesn't have that much for value. Like What does he actually have for value that, that definitely wants to check raise this flop? We're looking at two combos of king nine suited, three combos of pocket nines, three combos of pocket twos. King queen is a very reasonable check raise. We block that, so I think we have a pretty good hand to call on the, on the flop. Probably on the turn as well, because some draws pick up. Like, if he's check raising hands like 10 8 suited, like 10 8 of diamonds, um, he'd pick up a wonderful draw. Checking back seems like the only thing we can do. Betting's basically too thin, and the river is one of the best in the deck, if you ask me. And now we just put money in one way or another. If he bets, we call. If he checks, we bet. Fine going for a big size here. I'm also fine going for a sort of blocky kind of size. I'm fine with any size, really. The thing is, I think it's pretty unlikely that he's going to call with the worst hand, to be honest, as well, though. Like, because he'd have to have check-raised something like ace-9. Um, you will see players do that, so for that reason, I'm just going big here, because he's not going to fold that. So I'm probably going, like, 12 big blinds. Uh, this is fine. So I like the way you played it. I, li I like that you do this as well. Not, not a lot of people do that. So if you're unsure about a spot, just tagging your hand for review, looking at it later, maybe posting it in my Discord or somebody else's Discord, you know. Stuff like that um, will will definitely help out. Five, so we defend queen five. I wouldn't hate isoing. Like I wouldn't hate raising when somebody limps blind versus blind. A lot of players will just do it weak. Fives are going to continue one way or another. I think if we had the spade, maybe we could go for the check raise. We ding, 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 ding. That's right on the turn. So I think this is a card that we could lead. I don't really want to talk too much about Duncan because... The, the the basic idea to dunking, like, leading the turn when it's a card that really favours us and we have a lot more of that kind of shit than they do. When they're on the button, they can have, like, more of these lower kind of hands. If we're against under the gun, it's different. So it's kind of di difficult to talk about dunk leading when because you have to consider your position as well. For example, like, he has some 5x on the button. Under the gun has, like, so little 5x. Like, I don't even open 5s from under the gun, so I have three combos of 5x. If I'm against under the gun, I'm always going to lead this against button. It's slightly different. If you're confused about this kind of shit, just checking doesn't... I think people over overstab on turns as well. So, like, the river's kind of dicey. He could have, like, ace-x of hearts here. I'm okay check call in this river. So, the reason being is he still might have some hands, like, 6-7 of spades, 7-8 of spades that might want to bluff. Um, we would assume that he shouldn't be calling with, let's say, ace-jack offsuit. I'm probably not actually batting here because it is kind of difficult to get called by worse. So I'm probably just check calling. No, theoretically, we don't want to dunk big. We want to dunk small. We want to dunk like a third or like half pot, I think. But this is 10 and L and P. I mean, he's got two pair to be fair. So uh, yeah, I mean, I guess betting's fine. The, the thing is, that, so uh, like theoretically, like I think it's, uh, I think it's fine. No, theoretically, I think leading the turn, the size is bad, but exploitatively at 10 and L. Fuck it, let's do it. Just in general, like I say, when you've got when you've got good hands at, t at low stakes, you mainly want to bat and you mainly want to bat big. What are you doing here with queen five? What the fuck is this? What are you betting here for, range jam? Is this a value bet or a bluff? This is, this, like, what, 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 specifically, what are you trying to do? It annoys me when people do these thin bets that don't really make any sense. Like, if it's a bluff, what are you specifically trying to bluff? I hope he calls with ace high. Pocket threes. Pocket fucking threes. Pocket threes has the exact same amount of showdown as ASAX, basically. So if he's not folding pocket threes, he's not going to fold an ace. Don't do this. Like be, th This happened with Zissan last week. He bluffed a pair of fours and was like, I'm trying to get pocket pairs that are less than a 10 to fold. The guy calls with pocket nines. And it's like, okay, so you try to get a, specific, a very specific range to fold, and you couldn't even fucking do that. So how shit was your bluff? This just isn't going to work often enough. Maybe he folds an ace. You know what you should do? Don't bet this size if, you, if you're going to attack those kind of hands. Overbet. Bet 3x pot when we can have 7x. 
and put him to the test with the hand like threes or, or ace ten. Ace ten just has the easiest check call I've ever seen. Queen ten, would you stop fucking going so? I mean, to be fair, like, so these hands I just never three bet because they're just. We get, we're getting a good price on a caller in position. They play fairly well in position. We just have such an easy call with this hand. Like, I'd rather three bet something like king four off where we're just trying to, like, you know, trying to get a fold. So, like, let's have a look at defending. You can three bet a lot, right? It wants to three bet fold shit like this where the difference being in position, we can three bet weaker in position because, you know, we don't, ha when we play the hand, when we go post lot, we're in position, so it's easier. When we're out of position, we need better bluffs, right? Because we need to, we need to have a lot of playability because it's hard to play out of position. So we can use these king eight off, like jack six suited, shit like that. Hands like queen 10 off, queen jack off, king jack off, king 10 off, they just make good enough calls in position. We don't want to 3-bet fold it. We definitely don't want to 3-bet call it. Let's 3-bet fold some fucking junk. I'd much rather you do this with like queen 7 off than queen 10 off, to be honest. I, I have been saying though recently, you know, you could 3-bet a shitload blind on blind and get away with it, but I don't know, man. <laughs> Alright, queen 10, we 3-bet when we shouldn't have. We flopped the second not flush draw. Mate, you're just a little lag tired, aren't you? You're just a little lag tired. So this isn't the worst four bet here if we're going to go for the four bet. This isn't the worst three bet here if we're going to go for the three bet. If you're doing this all the time, you're doing it too much. And anyone with a brain, which to be fair, there's not that many people at 10NL with a brain, but they'll pick up on it. And you'll start getting put in the bin. Anyway, what size do we go for here? So we don't want to bet too big on this board. We want to be able to credibly wrap a range of hands. I don't mind this size. And honestly, I'm okay going for a big bet on this turn. Um, so we should have some hands that are going to fold turn. Like, let's say sevens with the club. That should really fold the turn. We've got queen high. Problem is, I think you'll find that you're going to get check jammed a reasonable amount by ace x because you don't want to see a shit river. So it's going to depend on opponent. We go for the four bet with the ace three, which is pretty fucking aggressive, but whatever. And we take it down, which we like. We're okay with that. Uh, and we take it down. All right, you little lag tad. Uh, Jack time we open on the button. So when, when boards have a bit more going on, I tend to bet bigger. So when I do bet, and I tend to be a bit tighter with what I bet. So I check back nonsense. But like with bluffs, I don't mind this as a bluff. We block some top pairs. We have a shitload of backdoors. I'm a fan of it. And I don't mind the sizing as well. This shows because you used a smaller sizing on the King 9 deuce earlier, rainbow. And then when it's a bit more connected, got a bit more shit going on. We go for the uh, bigger bet, which I think is fine. And I, I knew you were going to fucking go for the four bet here. We can call king queen, like blind versus blind here. But it's also a good hand to four bet, but I don't like four betting because I think this hand is actually really strong, blind versus blind. Because, like, he can still have a lot of hands like king eight off, king six off, like queen six suited, shit like that. So we actually dominate, like, quite a lot of hands here. Uh, I think four betting's fine. Uh, and he leads on the five, which. The thing is, like, so in this spot, so when, when I talked about Duncan, the 5 is better for him, yeah, but he shouldn't have that many 5x. Because we've bet so big on the flop, if he has something like King 5 of spades, I think he should fold the flop. I think theoretically he should fold the flop. So 6x is different. He'd have more 6x if it's a 6 on the turn. But again, he's against the button, so we still have, like, some 5x, whereas under the gun doesn't have a lot. So you'll see this a lot from, like, people that think they know what they're doing with donking and be like, oh, this card is good for me. I'm going to donk on the turn. And it's like, well, you've actually don't have that many 5x because you've called a big size on the flop. And also you're against a button who's better big size on the flop, so still has some 5x. Like, I'd actually, I tend to bet bigger with my bottom pairs on boards like this because it wants more protection. So if anything, I have a shitload of 5x and he has fuck all. So theoretically, donking this turn for this size is terrible. Uh, obviously, as played, we just fold. I'm going to four bet ace queen, obviously, which actually I'm, I'm okay. What do you mean fold? This is probably the... Why have you folded here, but you four bet fucking king queen, you four bet ace three? Like, this is like... This is a really good spot to four bet. Like, this wouldn't surprise me if, like, we're basically just pure four betting this. Yeah, actually just pure four betting ace queen, huh? And if you don't want to four bet this pure at, like, 10 and L, it's fine because people, you know, might under three bet, blah, blah, blah. But... Just the fact that you've been so aggressive and then you don't fucking fall about this is wild. Alright, three bet queens, we got a 10-9 deuce. Uh, we can probably pick big bets on this board texture. Alright, glad to see some that you haven't just fall about here. When somebody min clicks you, 
basically we can just call with our entire range apart from mega strong hands because they're obviously going to be a fish unless it's a misclick and then we can just we don't really have to be balanced because obviously a fish and we're just getting an amazing price on a call so basically don't fall back bluff just fall back aces and kings obviously you can tell ivy's got no uh got no he's not asked um did we go for the check race here with the ace five suited i assume uh, and then queens we drill top set on the turn yeah ace five just check raise uh, try and get as much money in as you can on this flop yeah fine with it fine going bigger to be honest our hand's kind of vulnerable so i don't mind going bigger so we can jam the turn on safe turns here i'm just going to bet the turn so he might he can have king jack but he could also have like hands like ace 10 might want to call if he's floated with like ace jack suited he's going to call I also don't mind checking, um, seeing as we block the top pairs, but I think it'll go check-check a lot, and th there's still a lot of bad cards here. So obviously a jack, a king, and eight are all pretty disastrous. Um, an ace could stop you getting action from certain hands. He could have hands like jacks that are just going to call, you know, 10 jack suited. And now it gets awkward with the SPR, because, like, we kind of don't, like, don't do this. This is so shit, because just if you're going to raise, we basically have to jam. Because any bluffs are going to want to jam, right? We're not going to fucking check min raise ace jack. So with the this is why I don't mind betting because the SPR gets a bit weird. So I don't mind raising. I, I, I Basically, I'm either going to check call or I'm going to check jam. Doing anything else is weird. And that's the thing. You, you've put yourself in the spot because you're like, shit, do I raise? Like, there are bad cards on the river or do I just uh, or do I just call? But your only raise size realistically is all in when there's like already like 50 in the middle. I mean, like, check min raise just looks fucking... It's just like, okay, we just got top set. All right, okay. Fine with the check call, but then this might just go check check with, like, ace 10 or jack jack, and maybe we could have got the triple out. What are you doing? You're in the middle of a fucking hand. Don't worry about this one. And he, he's got a set of fucking fives on the river. What a life you live. He's like, ah, oh, I've just hit a five. What a... I wonder if I don't mind his line, because, like, we could probably just... We probably should just fold flop, to be honest. Don't do shit like this. It, it, when you, especially when you're saying, oh, I don't have discipline. Like, yeah, no shit. You just fucking, you're in the middle of a, you're on the, you're in a river spot. I know you obviously just chat calling, but like fucking just what do you need to do here? What are you doing here? What are you doing? You got king three, bro. You're under the fucking gun range down. What are you doing? Look how far away that is from a fucking open. King eight suited is a fine open. What are you doing? You bitched out of the four bet with ace queen offsuit, but you think fucking king three suited? Yeah, let's raise. Yeah, it's suited, suited, bro. We're still hype, so mate. Fucking still hype. So I open king three suited. What do you mean you haven't paid attention? What are you not paying attention to? Get in the fucking bin. What are you not paying attention to? The fact that you're under the gun. The fact that you've got king three. Literally, what is it that you you haven't paid attention to? I don't understand. Would you open king eight suited? It depends on the table, but that, that, we're not talking about that. We're talking about king three suited. And no, I wouldn't open king three suited because I've got a brain. So fucking unnecessary. I, I wasn't paying attention. Pay attention. It's so simple. The reason I have to fucking say it in a savage way is because people don't fucking listen otherwise. Uh, flop top two with queen jack. I'm okay with anything here. Small bet, big bet, check call, check raise. Um, I'm, I'm okay with everything over bet. I'm kind of a fan of on this turn. Yeah. 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 I could, I, yeah. 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 I could, uh, I could over bet this. I mean, it happens. It shouldn't happen. Don't let it happen. Even queen eight off in the cutoff, man. Fucking simmer down. I'm even opening queen nine, bro. Just like, it's kind of hard. So I can't even really say exploitatively because exploitatively I'm opening less wide because I need my range to be tighter because people are just fucking about versus me at 10 and now. Exploitatively, I, I feel as though the, the pools are relatively active, even at 10 and L now. So I, I do think that like pre-flop, you need to iron your shit. You need to you need to get your shit together. Get it all in a bag of ranges. Just get your shit together. Don't go like if you want to deviate because there's fun players everywhere, I'm okay with it. But not Queen 8 off in the cutoff. Not fucking King 3 suited under the gun. Yeah, in the bin you go. I'm not even sure about the C-bet, but, like, I, I never have a hand this bad here. Like, it's just so trash. 
It's be suited either or. I'm basically always just calling, but you're a little lag tired, so you're gonna go for the uh, for the three bet. And this five seven suited could be a fun check raise as well. Bottom pair, all the back doors. This could be a pretty fun check raise here. Blocking pocket fives. The thing is, so when when we're doing this with fours and seven five suited, I don't think we should be doing this all the time. Um, when we have the back door flush, or we are continuing here. We can call this. We can. I think raising's okay though. I'm uh I'm I'm all right with it. Range jam. The, the, the only problem will lie in that you're doing this all the time, which maybe at 10 and L it's going to work a lot. As you move up, you're going to get found out. And this is a turn where I think that it we just want to yeah, we just want to check and give up now. He's got flushes. He has some 6x. The problem is this cuts out a lot of our value range. So what I would do on a turn like this is probably just check most of my range, including like um let's say five six including sixes and fives uh the river i could i could get behind a bluff because you know we would have seven four suited here we will have some boats we will have some flushes would expect him to bet some flushes we we have fold equity against some like hands like jack ten of diamonds i think should be folding i think hands like pocket nine should be folding we're pretty low down in our range maybe we could have something like you know three four suited like three four of clubs that's worth but I can get behind a bluff here, but you're going to have to go fucking big. Don't be like half part of some little bitch, but, but at least three quarters, if not like 20, 22. Overbet's a little different because when you're overbetting, you're now completely polar. So we, we, we probably don't, we're probably not betting 7-4 or 7-9 for this size. So now we're basically saying we have a full house. Whereas if we bet like 22, 23 big blinds, we can have straights, flushes and full houses. Honestly, though, with the smaller stakes, maybe it's just better to use this big size because they're just going to be scared about calling. But I'm okay with this range, Jam. I'm okay with it. And tag that guy is a fucking absolute fucking whopper. Fucking, yeah, yeah, 7 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice one, buddy. This is your problem with bluffing at 10 and now. And this is, the, this is the problem I've found. I made what I, I consider to be a very, very good bluff with Queen 10. And the guy called with one of the worst hands ever that you could call within that spot. In fact, it's actually, in my opinion, the worst hand he could have to call in terms of blockers and unblockers. But people don't think like that. They just think like, her der der, I've got a pair of eights. Her der, he's bat. Her der, ice cream, I call. That's literally what's going through his fucking head. So I don't know what to say about it. Basically, theoretically, I think it's fine. And we'll leave it at that. But this guy is not a guy you want to bluff like this. And also, I think you find that like the 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 bet check bet line or the raise check bet line when you when you when you're aggressive on the flop and you calm down on the turn and then you're aggressive on the river, even though for me that's like quite a value heavy line, people don't believe it. When you bet when you when you're aggressive on the flop and you check the turn and then you're aggressive again on the river, people are like, well, that story doesn't make sense. He checked the turn, so he can't have a good hand because people don't recognize that you're going to be balanced on this kind of turn. Honestly, Jax, I think we can just uh, we can just pitch this. Obviously, you're not gonna, but literally, I'm just folding in these spots. If you look at like GTO Wizard here, let's have a look at GTO Wizard. So this is under the gun versus middle position versus big blind. This might fall at a very small frequency. My guess is it's gonna primarily fold. Uh, yeah. So look at it. It wants to basically fold eighty percent of the time. And that's basically against these sizes, 6.8, 2.3. So this wants to go 19 so versus 6.5. So your sizing is actually okay. I think going 19 is fine. Honestly, we're just like folding here is just the play. Just fucking, we can check the EV of this, right? You ready for the EV of this? The EV of raising is basically zero. It's minus 0 0.01. Like the EV of like queens is 0 0.52. You look at aces, it's 25 big blinds, the EV of it. Like you look at ace king, it's 0 0.3. Jackson tens, it's 0 0.01. The reason why we'll do this is if we never do it with any of these hands, not so much about board coverage, but if we don't do it with jacks, tens, queen, like any of this or this, then we just have aces, kings and ace king. Well, look at the fucking EV of it. It's basically... I mean, shit, you guys can't even see it. So the, the, the EV of doing it, like with jacks, is minus 0 0.01. It's basically zero EV to do this. So honestly, just wait for better spots. And this is at, this is at 50 NL where the rake actually starts to be less shite. So at 10 NL, I don't think this can make money theoretically. 
Now, if you uh, if you know that the players are just fucking about, then it's probably going to make money, right? But this is probably a losing player. No cap. Maybe we could fall back fold sometimes and fall back call sometimes, but we just don't want to do that with Jack. So, honestly, just put it in the bin. It's just easier. It works this time, and I went on a big rant for fucking no reason, but unless you know people are getting out of line. And th this is where you can really use your HUD and exploit as well. So if this guy over a thousand hands, three bets, 25%, this is going to print money, right? If this guy over a thousand hands has three bet 1%, you are literally setting money on fire. Like you're literally setting it on fire. Right, Ace 8 in the cutoff is basically the bottom of what we can open. Uh, Queen I suited, just fold. <laughs> Um, so this uh, it's kind of a weird board this one on, on the left. I, I really don't mind a check I don't mind a bet. I kind of really for me. It's such a disgusting spot I don't mind just checking back and playing a turn with this. Huh? So let's have a look at Razor Edge what it wants to three bet here um, small blind versus cutoff Yeah, just again like we're basically theoretically three betting too much and honestly out of position I think you just want to be tighter I think if this was in position you should like get, fucking go for it But when you're in the small blind it's got enough playability. I don't mind this. I don't mind this. I, I don't mind checking this turn as well, by the way. So this is a card where he's probably always going to want to check on. If we're betting this turn, we should bet small. Think about it. Like, we need to now specifically target a king here. We're just pricing him out with like 5x, 3x. Hands like pocket sixes. He's just going to mock. Um, and he can have some ace-x here. If I've got like ace-10, I'm just check calling in his shoes. Once we bet that big on the turn, I think we have to slow down on the river. I think we can only go for small bets if we bet, really. I guess we could, like, go for the... The the, the bigger bet might look kind of bluffy, but he could have, like, ace-7. He could have, like, 6-4. He could have ace-10, ace-9. He could have, like, king-7 suited. So I think this is kind of... I think this is too thin. But it's ten and L. But okay, so like let's let let's assume let's assume that he doesn't call with just absolute fucking shite, and he might call like king queen, but fold most of the shit. You got so lucky there, man. Like ace six and ace four, you can get called by, and ace deuce suited. And it's only like the the like ace four he might have off suit, but like ace deuce and ace six should only be suited. So like you get called by so little here, man. You're so fortunate he shows ace six. Ace four suit be open. Fine, go for a small size on this board. And we can defend to a raise. Uh, yeah, I think we always call here. We have all the back doors and a size good sometimes. So, in, in like if I have something like eight nine of spades, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna check raise um, in his shoes. Um, so yeah, and then because I'm doing a lot of betting, I will just bet and call with a ten. I'll bet flat with like a full house. Here's kind of awkward. So in one sense, we we have the best hand a lot, and we kind of don't want to bet and get raised off our equity. But on the other, like, if it bricks, he might be able to bluff us off. So I don't mind betting here. I don't mind checking. I think when we bet here, theoretically, my guess is we're probably going to want to pick small bets because we're going to want to bet more than just 10x. Because if we bet big here, the bigger the bet, the more pole you are, right? So if you bet big on the turn here, like if you bet pot, you're basically saying you have a 10 or nothing, right? We want to be able to bet um, a wide range of hands because we want to protect and get value with certain hands, like let's say pocket eights, but we also want to have like strong hands in that range so we don't, um, so we're not just, you know, betting big with our strong hands and bluffs kind of thing. So let's have a look at this in GTO Wizard, see what it's saying here. Ba -da -da -da. So probably just picking small bets with a lot of our range. Villain's going to be doing a lot of raising here, 22%. We are going to pure call ace five suited, it's going to be my guess. Indeed, we are. Um, except ace five of diamonds, but it doesn't want to bet ace five of diamonds, basically. So we are going to call. The turn is going to come the seven of clubs. Villain will be checking a reasonable amount, 61% of the time. And my guess is we're primarily betting small. We are indeed. So look, no big bets here. Uh, basically betting half part or 33%. And ace five suited, it is pure betting. So it's basically mixing between 50% um, and 33% here. So I, I knew it wouldn't want to bet massive here because then we're kind of polar. We also just like, we don't really have fold equity against hands like pocket sixes. He's just not going to fold. And this is a combo I definitely just don't want to bet on the river. But you've got ace high, so you're going to bet on the river. I guess I don't hate it. Let's have a look what GTO Wizard wants to do on the queen. Um, so let's say we do bet half part, you bet slightly bigger. And the big blind calls here. 
And it's the Queen of Diamonds. I'm assuming Big Blind isn't leading. Nope. Yeah, it wants to it wants to check this hand. The EV of I mean it's only picking only picking big sizes, 84%. Check has like w one big blind of EV, so check means like we we can win by checking sometimes. It's not often though. Um, I mean the thing is here, I guess it's okay because he's probably gonna have some four x and some like seven x, and we can have queen x of clubs. So I don't hate this bluff exploitatively, but it's generally a combo we definitely don't want to do this with. Obviously, you're gonna three bet the seven eight suited, which we want to do at a low frequency, but you're gonna do it a hundred percent of the time. These hands really don't have much EV in them, so we'll probably do this in both ranges. In fact, we might not even do it in Raise Your Edge ranges. The main reason we do this is board coverage. So MP versus under the gun, doesn't want to use 7-8. It wants to do this very infrequently because they have no EV. Now let's have a look at what it wants to do here. It's just not even doing it. Look at it. The EV of it is negative. The EV of it is zero for 4-5 and 5-6. Uh, that is a point with deeper. Um, I can't be asked because this is another problem as well. Like you, you're not always going to get to to do this. Also, like when we're deeper, it should be four betting more, and we don't really want to be four bet with this hand because it's really good for straights. But then for flushes, we just have reverse implied odds. On the right hand side, fucking amazing board. Bet what you want. Go big. Go small. I don't hate check every now and then. I think I'm mainly just betting big here. Occasionally, I'll check a hand like kings with a heart. I'm going to check aces with a heart a lot just for uh, just for balance here. But yeah, we can just bet big. And I'm going to bet half pot on the turn and jam the river and hope he doesn't have pocket nines, which he just will have. Uh, we bet the flop here, which I think is fine with the 7-8 suited. The turn is really good for us. The pro I, I, I don't hate a, a check back here. I don't like it though, so just bet the turn. And just if you get raised, you're going to hate your life. I like going for a small size, though. Here, I'm just going to bet 19 big blinds and jam most rivers here. I don't need to go quite this big. and go a little bit smaller, but I think it's fine. Um, I'm probably just going big on this river now with a 7-8 suited. Uh, that's a amazing river. Uh, yeah, just go big here. Three quarters, pot, whatever you want. Just put money in. He could have a better hand here as well. He won't, but he could. Oh, he does. He's got the fucking nut flush and decided not to raise. And there you go. That's why we don't want to play these hands, especially deeper. Imagine not raising, though. Fucking grow up. Wait. I guess he's only got jam. And, like, just raise the turn versus the size. He should just raise the turn versus a third. And if you've got a fucking full house, good luck to you. Uh, Kings, we jam. And get called by King 10 of... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with this play. Um, so let's go over them. This is why we don't really want to do this deeper as well. Like, even though deeper they play better. Like, they basically, like, it's kind of weird. Like, it's the same as, like, low pocket pairs. So low pocket pairs and suited connectors. They don't have much EV 100 big blinds deep, right? Because of how often you're going to miss and shit. Then they get more EV when you're deeper. But then when you're really deep, they have less EV because like flush over flush and set over set are things. So there's reverse implied odds. So like, they're just shit, really. They're just like a bit shit. Maybe 150 bigs deep, they're proper good. Uh, he should raise turn versus the size. He should probably... The river's kind of really sketch because like he need us to have specifically like queen jack suited. Like the thing is no one's going to fucking bluff in this spot, like in his spot. He's just not going to check raise bluff on the river. 200 bigs deep. It's just not going to fucking happen. Pop, fine. I, I I don't know what to say about it. Just fucking, honestly, just fold prey. Just fold prey. Uh, the Kings, I really like the way he played it. I think we could go slightly smaller on the turn because if you look at the SPR, like, you know, it's he's got less than 70 and there's 90 in the middle, so I don't think we needed to go 25 or 23, whatever we went. Could go a bit smaller. But I like the play. Uh, I like his play with the exception of pre-flop call. I think he should 4 bet or fold King Tan. And I'll probably lean towards fold in these positions. Maybe against you, 4-bet works better. Either way, the money goes in. Um, I don't mind his play. He unblocks hands. Like, the thing is, like, so he unblocks things like, let's say, ace-jack of hearts. He unblocks hearts. He unblocks, like, queen-jack suited, stuff like that. I wouldn't really, like, I think my favorite hand to bluff would be something along the lines of, like, king-queen of spades or... Or just like six, seven of diamonds just because I've got seven high and I'm a grown-up, so I'm not going to fucking check on the river. 
But in terms of post lap, I think his play was fine. Uh, Ace two suited, yeah. Uh, I actually, I mean, I know you're going to squeeze regardless, but there's a few reasons why I like this. One, because we are in position against this guy. So a lot of the time he's going to fold, he's going to call, and now we're in position against one player, which is so much better. Also, we're a little bit deeper, and these suited aces have more value when we are deeper because we can flush over flush people, as the last guy did with Ace two suited. So I actually am a big fan of this play, uh, and I really like the size as well, Range Jam. So I like this. This is this is a really good example of being very aggressive, like this one. Like this is a really good example of um, three bet and aggressively pre flop. And uh, yeah, let's just blast. So I'm probably gonna bet really small on this flop. I'm probably gonna bet a quarter part, and then I'm gonna just hammer the shit out of the turn. So, like, this is amazing for us. A lot of his range here, when he's probably a fun player, is going to be pocket pairs. I'm probably going to bet smaller. Just, I don't even mind him calling, peeling one off with nines, just because I'm just going to barrel the shit out. I'm going, I'm going to barrel him off all kinds of shit on the turn. Uh, he could have, like, king jack suited, king queen suited, but, like, yeah, that's just going to happen so often. So, well played, range jam. I like that one. Tannenel is not literally slots. Tannenel is a fucking... Money printing machine, says Weasel, who's fucking still four buy-ins down. Obviously, you're going to fall about this King-5. I don't hate it if he's super active. I don't mind calling when we're this deep. I don't mind calling. We're getting such a good price in position. Just recognize when people do things to a smaller size, it gives us a better price on a call. So we can make money with hands like this. <coughs> King-10 suit, we're going to three bet. I'd go a bit bigger because we're deeper. This, for me... I mean, we're a bit deeper. Uh, I guess we could bet. So for me here, I'm just trying to get to showdown with this and trying to improve. It also makes a really nice check because let's say that we check back and we turn up the, the nut flush. He's never going to put us on the nut flush. I think this makes a really good check. So when you consider the hands that we that we, we can get value from here, when we bet, it's so hard for him to call with the worst hand, right? He'd have to call like tens with a spade. Fair enough, he can call that to a small size. But this board absolutely smacks us, so I'm okay checking this back because of the range. When we start betting, he's going to fold a lot of his shit anyway, right? He's going to fold hands like, let's say, nines without a spade or like whatever. And he's only going to continue with, with better hands. So I think we can just check this. Even though it's a board, we can probably just slam. Obviously turn the fucking nuts. Yeah, I don't mind going for a small bet. I'd say if we were 100 big blinds deep here, I'd probably check back um, because the SPR would be lower. Um, as played, I, well, I, I'm desperate to get more money in and I want to balance like hands like like two pair hands. No, don't. E even though like I say that we want to get the, the, the SPR really small, I think theoretically we want to be betting sm small here because otherwise we're just going to end up like... Like what are we going to bet big here? Like... As a bluff. You got five seconds as well, bro. I just bet small. I don't hate this because, you know, the guy likes to station down. I bet he's got aces. Okay. Bet small. Just, I, I would check back the flop and then we can start blasting turn and river. Just, I don't want to talk about it too much because we shouldn't really be four betting king five. It's not often. Don't fucking, what are you doing here? You, you, you winding me up. You, no, don't do this. Right, there's, 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 there's being an Agtar and then there's just being a dickhead, right? What do you think this is? Fucking 8-6 versus under the gun. Jesus Christ, man. He's very tight. Oh, he's very tight. Yeah, yeah. Then then let's 3-bet him with 8 high if he's really tight. Because I'm sure he opens fucking loads of hands under the gun. If he's very tight, I'm sure he's opening King-7, King-8 suited under the gun. So if he's really tight, let's have a look. So if you imagine all of these hands that can open, yeah... You imagine, do you think he's opening ace 10 off, queen jack off, king 7 suited, ace 2 suited, pocket 2s? No. So what happens to his range, yeah? What happens to his range when he's, he doesn't open the weaker parts of it? It gets condensed into very fucking strong hands. So instead of having all this shit that just folds, he's got really good hands that doesn't want to fold. You fucking idiot. This is the problem with people as well. People are like, this is why I hate it. And I go really fucking mad when people even mention the words red line. Because people are like, what's your red line? If you've got a good red line, that means you're dead good. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what happens when you've got a fucking good red line. You're making shit plays like this. 
But it's like, ah, oh, it goes on my red line, it's fine. Yeah, we'll just triple off, even though it's a spot we don't want to triple off, because it goes on red line, innit? Yeah, look how good I am, my red line goes dead up. Fucking ice cream. Now what do you do? Good hand to triple it off. Compared to that, my Jack 10 play was so... Stefan, don't fucking... We're not, we're not comparing which was worse. They were both shit, okay? You're both shit. <laughs> go on, drill it. Get fucking raised. Go all in, Re Rima. It works. It goes on red line. That means you played it well. Uh, also, shut up. I'm not even going to ban you because it's just... It's too weak of a troll to ban. Uh, okay, so the ace queen here, we could fob out or we can call in these positions. Um, at different ranges will say different things. The EV is basically going to be very similar, I would imagine. So bottom versus small blind, we are just pure calling according to raise your edge. Uh, yeah, um, basically very, very similar EV. Um, the EV of four betting is... Well, the EV of calling is actually higher than the EV of four betting, but again, because we want to four bet these hands so fucking badly... Um, that we want to have some bluffs in, so we're basically losing a tiny bit of EV by doing that. So, GTO Wizard basically mixes 50-50, either is fine, and we stack off on this board. Classic, but well, don't do that range jam. Get that fucking discipline. Uh, so, I, I, I'm, I'm going to see what GTO Wizard does in this spot here, because I'm going to raise here a lot with Ace Queen with this combo. Um, he still has hands like King Queen suited, Ace Jack suited. Still got hands like Ace King that are going to be put in a spot. Um, he's going to have hands like Ace X of Spades, uh, King Jack of Spades, which will just run it. So here I'm just going to bat. I don't really know what size. I guess small sizes here, and then throw up if he raises. Two four suited. Why the fuck not? The problem is you're pricing out a lot of hands that you beat here. I don't really like this size. We'll have a look at this hand in GTO Wizard because it's kind of a weird spot, but like. You know, yeah, you might call kings with a spade, which has good equity. Ace king with a spade, like ace jack suited, but like you, you can bet small and get called by more hands. Get in the bin. Worst river in the deck. Um, so I'm wondering if there is actually theoretically a chance we should bluff this river when you consider we should probably bluff ace jack pure on this river, by the way. Because when you look at like how low down in our range we are with two pair, we can have flushes, we can have straights. Two pairs actually a weak hand. Obviously, you never do it, but Queen at Jack Deuce. Our opponent bets small, which it wants to do some of the time. We have Ace Queen no Spade raising sometimes. So okay, yeah. So it it wants to raise more often when we don't have the Spade because it does more, even though that we actually have more EV in the hand when we have a Spade, because. We want our opponent to have the spade. Uh, so it does want to raise sometimes with ace queen. Villain check in 81% of the time. And we are only picking, I mean, we can bet half pot. Wants to mix with ace queen here. Let's pretend we bet half pot. Villain not doing much raising. River is the king of spades. Villain does have some donk jams with some, with the ten of spades, the jack of spades. And then just king queen of clubs. Which I would I mean, what does that block? I don't really know. I guess it just needs some bluff, so it just thinks fuck it. Check and let's see what it wants to jam here. So it wants to jam King Jack as a bluff. Okay, it wants to pure check ace queen. It wants to jam ace jack. Nope. Yeah, it jams sometimes with ace jack as a bluff. So I was right. Because when you actually consider how low down in a range we are, um, it wants to jam that sometimes. So it wants to jam some two pairs, but ace-queen is pure checking. So you played it kind of fine. The The turn bet was a bit big, I think, but, I mean, it worked. Uh, why are we calling all of a sudden? Yeah, just three bet, bro. Just three bet, a7 suited. Oh, weird, you've got a7 of hearts. I'm, oh, my God. How good do you run range jam? Fucking hell. Uh, just put money in. Just put money in. Don't care what you do. Honestly, when, when I'm in these spots, I'm not being funny. So he's a fish. He's playing 10 and else. He's probably a fish. I'm just betting really big, and I'm betting really big. Like, I don't really give a shit about theory. The, the good thing about this is that he's going to have so many pairs here that just want to continue. So, and like flush draws, bat doors, yeah, bet big, bet bigger. This is a board again. So even though it's rainbow, this is still like, it's not really that disconnected, right? So I saw before that you were, you were doing a lot of small betting on the disconnected boards. King eight deuce, king three deuce. Um, and then you were betting bigger on like the queen five, six um, flush draw. 
I think that this, even though it's monotone, there's still enough connectivity there. It's not really that disconnected, so I think we should be betting bigger. And the fact we're deeper, and the fact we've got a strong hand, just put loads of more money in. Uh, okay, this guy is just making us really horny. Honestly, do whatever you want as long as you don't go the uh, as long as you don't click the fold button. So theoretically, we want to call here. I think exploitatively, I honestly might even just click it, like literally just click min click it, even though it looks so strong, because fish are gonna fish. You're also just don't worry about this shit, man. Fucking hell. Right, I know I said use your hood a bit more, but it's in a hundred hands, yeah. It's in a hundred hands, and you're trying to get fucking like, like imagine. So when you're getting specific stats, for example. Flop check raise in three bet pots. You need thousands of hands. You need literally thousands of hands. Like, don't don't worry about this shit. Just like, just Look at that. You got 11, 11 hands on flop in this spot. So I think that we could jam because he's probably like flush draws and stuff might call off. Honestly, you could click it. You could call as long as you don't go near the fold button. It's fine. Bet big on this turn. This isn't a board texture. I really want to do that much over betting on. So I'm probably just betting pot, but I'm betting bigger on the flop. But I guess overbet's probably fine. We can probably overbet. All right, gamer win. Simmer down. We go for the overbet anyway. It's fine. Here, I'm just putting some money in. Just bet small, bro. Just bet really small. Just let him... Give him some room. We don't want to jam. Ah, what are, we, what are you jamming for, man? If you're going to do this, get it in on the fucking flop. What are you jamming for? Your hand basically needs no protection. Because, I mean, yeah, from maybe a flush. But, like, fucking hell, simmer down. It's better really small. Give him some room. You're just folding out loads of shit here. I don't even mind a check back as well with the SPR of one. I actually think the worst thing to do is jam. I think checking... I think betting small, followed by checking back, followed by jamming. Polarized. Don't fucking... I mean, it calls any... <laughs> get in the bin. That's what you get for making... That's what you That's what you get for making a, uh, for making a shit play. You lose anyway, but like... Don't, don't throw... Don't throw terms like that out like polarized like i mean yeah you, you are being polar when you jam but like just fucking just bet small anyway get in the bin literally people just throwing out buzzwords just an exploit jam what the fuck do you mean an exploit jam literally what are you talking about what do you mean an exploit jam how are you, how are you exploiting a guy exactly who's got 111 hands on how do you like what do you mean by your exploit jamming Anyway, just fucking, yeah, stop throwing out buzzwords. Triple barrel range merge, bet, bitch, bluff. Just fucking, just bet small, whatever. So, all in all, Mr. Range Jam, I think you play theoretically way too aggressive, but I think it's probably going to work in these pools. What you should be doing, have a look at your graph if you're not going to send it me so I can berate you on stream. Have a look at your graph and just, just see, like, how well it's working. Like, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to actually work out like if it's definitely working because you, you could be you could be massively punting in some spots, but like I don't know. So I think you play too aggressively theoretically, but I think that it's probably going to work in those pools. Just I'd use your hood a bit more in terms of just not even not like trying to do what you were doing where you were fucking clicking to see what the 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 turn the the flop check raise was in three bet pop in a hundred hands, but just seeing someone's v pip and. I'll sort of have a general idea of how somebody plays just from, like, the layout of the numbers, if that makes sense. I'll look at the hood and straight away from the layout of the numbers and the differences in some of the numbers, I'll have an idea of how they play, you know. When the VPIP is, you know, a hell of a lot higher than the PFR, you know they're going to be, like, a fish, basically, right? When the three bat's, like, mega high, you know, they're going to just, you know, and try and work out what kind of opponents you think you can bluff to take these aggressive lines on so you're not just bluffing into fish that are going to call you with like third power.